Hello and welcome guys, my name is Steve and welcome to yet another 5 Minute Friday where I share my engineering experience with you. So in this video we're talking about 5 mistakes I made as a software engineer and some of them I actually regret, some of them I do not, some of them taught me a lot of things along the way. So if you find any value or if you relate to any of the things that I'm gonna say in this video, please make sure to like and share this video because that's gonna mean a lot to me. So without further ado, let's jump into this video. So mistake number one I made as a software engineer is focusing on syntax, languages and frameworks and all that stuff. So as a junior developer when you get hired that is absolutely normal to focus on syntax, on learning languages, frameworks and solutions to different problems. And as you further move into your career it's not okay to focus on these things because as the time moves on technologies change and you may have to rebrand yourself, you may have to change the way you present yourself to companies, to the people who hire you. That's why it's not a good thing to attach to these technologies, to these solutions which tomorrow may change because the problems change and solutions change over time so uh, it's a better idea to focus on yourself as a software engineer as the way you think the way you think about problems the way you approach those problems and uh, the solutions you find to those problems and choose the language the framework or the specific technology depending on the problem you're solving and don't attach to these technologies don't name yourself something like I mean, I did that myself. I, I, used, I used to call myself a JavaScript developer, a PHP developer, and then slowly I started to, uh, to call myself a software engineer because that is what I am in the end. I am just solving problems and uh, I'm trying to pick up the best technologies, the best uh, solution for that problem. And problems don't tend to change over time. However, solutions change over time, meaning frameworks, languages, and things that uh, approach a certain problem in a different way change over time and you're gonna have to rebrand yourself, you're gonna have to uh, reattach to a different language and uh, recall yourself uh, X, Y or Z developer, which is not a good thing, which uh, decreases your image in the front of the uh, employer, if you will. All right, guys, mistake number two is not learning design patterns and software design. And that is highly important, especially when you start progressing in your career. So uh, that is totally acceptable and understandable because as you get hired as a junior developer, as a junior engineer, you start learning the frameworks, the languages, the technologies which the company works with. And you start realizing that uh, the libraries, the technologies, uh, the frameworks, uh, they're written in a certain way and the offers picked up to write them in a certain way. Yeah, that depends on the language and you start opening up that framework, that library, and you realize it's a complete mess and you don't understand what the heck is going on and why did the offers choose a specific way to actually implement that solution. But other than that, what I wanted to say is not learning software design and design patterns may actually make your code breakable, unmaintainable, and if you leave the company, for example, you may leave some piece of code or a lot of code which is unreadable, unmaintainable, uh, and not a lot of people will want to touch that piece of code because it's just ugly, it's just unmaintainable, and uh, I've been there, trust me, I've been there, I, I had to the opportunity to read code which wasn't pleasant to read. And we're not talking about reading, uh, we're also talking about understanding what's going on. And if that code is not written using design patterns and uh, software design in mind, that's gonna be ugly and it's gonna be a complete mess. It's gonna be a complete waste of time for the developers. And I'm not really proud of this one because uh, I left a couple of companies behind and I probably uh, left a couple of messy code behind and the developers who come on board are probably cursing me for writing that stupid code, but hey, we're all juniors, we're all starting somewhere, and make sure you try to avoid that mistake, make sure to try to learn uh, the design patterns and uh, software design as soon as you get your hands on all these. All right, so next we're talking about mistake number three, and by mistake number three, I mean waiting for opportunities. So let's say you're already an expert when it comes to uh, the technologies which your company uses, the frameworks, the languages, uh, libraries, whatever. So let's say you're an expert in that. Let's also say you know the design patterns and the software design, your code looks clean and beautiful, maintainable and all that good stuff. Now you started to get bored because you're trying to, uh, I don't know, you're, you're doing stuff which you don't like, you're solving bugs and you do all that stuff. And as developers, as engineer, we don't always do rocket science. Sometimes we have to solve bugs, sometimes you have to I don't know, debug some stuff and do stuff which is not so interesting. So waiting for opportunities is definitely a mistake that I regret making because it just slows down your growth. It slows down your success in your career and that means 
you're gonna get to that success, but you're gonna get to that success later on in time because you waited for the employer to give you a specific task, meaning you waited for that opportunity. So instead of waiting for such opportunities, I advise you to start working on a side project, to start working with technologies which you wished you would uh, play with, you would learn about and all that stuff. And that's really not complicated. You just pick up a problem and you start playing with those solutions. You start integrating some technologies which you wanted to uh, integrate, you wanted to play with, to experiment with, uh, or you could just uh, build a project for yourself or for, for your friend or whatever. Just do something which you think is rocket science, something which uh, gets you as excited as uh, you would have given a task from your team lead. So as I was saying, guys, my point is still valid. Do not wait for opportunities, create opportunities for yourself, even if that means to do a side project or to do some freelancing or to even change your company, if that's gonna help, if that's gonna create an opportunity for you to get better at what you're doing to progress in your software engineering career. Mistake number four that I'm not really proud of and I keep making it day by day is is not investing in myself and not allocating time for self-development and self-learning. Now, as you may know already, the moment you get hired by a company or by a certain employer, the time just flies like that. The time just flies and you just realize five years or even 10 years passed and you're working for the same company, you're not really allocating time for self-development and you're hustling all the time, you work fully, you work 100% for the company and you don't really allocate uh, time for self-development, for learning something new, for playing with something new or for even developing something which is not tech related, not. Uh, engineering related, if you will. So most of good companies out there, even small and medium companies, actually give the employees the opportunity to work on themselves, to do some self-development. They allocate you some time to actually work on yourself. So it depends on you if you use that time or not, but I highly advise you to use that time to self-develop. So as I was saying, guys, and I cannot stress it enough, do not give in 100% and do not hustle 100%. Do not just focus on the work and nothing else. Try to also focus on yourself. Try to invest in yourself to do some self-development because most companies allow you to do that. So that's why I try to take advantage of these possibilities, of this opportunity. That is highly important to keep the balance between work and between self-development. That's super important. I cannot stress it enough. That's going to improve your life. That's going to improve you as an engineer. So make sure you do that and do not make this mistake. And every time you hustle, every time you do a lot of overwork, try to think about this because this is something which you will regret later if you don't work on yourself, if you don't develop yourself because time just flies. So don't make this mistake. And last mistake we're talking about guys, mistake number five is bad salary negotiation. And I know a lot of you will agree with that. A lot of you will relate because as soon as you pass in that interview, you realize you asked for too little and you're just gonna suck. You're just gonna complain about it because you didn't negotiate properly. And I get it, we all make that mistake. So we all kind of freeze when we're asked about the salary, about the financial stuff, because we're not really used to that. And that feels like uh, an inconvenient question, but it shouldn't be because you're really selling yourself out. So you should sell yourself for the right value. So that's why when you're asked about the money, about the salary, try to sell yourself just a little more than you've actually deserved because time is going to pass and you're actually going to see that you may actually be better than others. Uh, better than uh, the majority maybe and uh, then you realize you actually negotiated in a wrong way and you're actually mad at that. So instead of complaining and saying that your salary sucks and you didn't negotiate right, try to negotiate in the very beginning. And also keep one more thing in mind, promotions are not going to save you. If you don't negotiate your salary in the very beginning, nobody's gonna give you 200% after that because promotion doesn't work that way and business doesn't work that way. So that's why try to negotiate your salary correctly in the first place. Now I get it, if you're a junior developer, junior engineer, and you just got hired for the first time, you really don't have that big of a choice. And my advice for you is try to get a lot of experience and switch companies and negotiate a better salary because it's all about negotiation. Because part of your happiness as an engineer, as a developer is also getting paid correctly. Otherwise, you're not gonna like your job, you're not gonna like your work because you're gonna see you're doing a lot of work. So it doesn't really matter if you know a lot of things or if you're very high skilled. If you negotiate your salary badly, you're gonna have to suffer afterwards because promotions are not going to save you. If you don't negotiate your salary correctly in the first place, 
at the interview process, it's gonna suck for you in the long run. So that's why try to negotiate your salary correctly and try to avoid these mistakes or uh, at least try to not repeat this mistake in the future. All right guys, so that was pretty much it on this video and that's pretty much it on my five mistakes I made as a software engineer. So if you have made any other mistakes as a software engineer, please let us know in the comments below so that the entire community and all of us, including myself, may actually take some value, take some lessons out of those mistakes and benefit from it. So as I was saying in the beginning, guys, if you found any value out of this video and you think you relate to any of the mistakes that I shared in this video, please let me know by liking and sharing this video. This way you actually let me know that you like the video, you found any value out of this video and it just encourages me to uh, push forward and to do more videos like this. And without further ado, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.